bigger strategy. So, Joe, did you have a question? No. Yeah. Let's discuss it. What can we try to do? Shyam has an idea? Oh, I see. Okay, so here's Sham's idea. Sham says, correct me if I'm wrong, take this tape and cut it and get a really, really, really good uh, rope and pull this end over because it's infinite <laughs> and, and crash it over here. So we're going to move it over this way, right? And then we're going to get one of these magicians who's really, really good with a riffle card shuffle and just interleave these things. All right, so this is all done in our heads, of course, because this machine still looks like that. So that means any movement to the right on a regular machine, sorry, any movement to the right on this two-way machine does what? Does it go to the right or the left? I, I want to hear some ideas. It's, it goes to the left. It's, it's two moves to the right if we're on the right half of the tape, and two moves to the left if we're on the left half. So right moves is complicated. If you're on the right, so I guess we have to remember whether we're on the right side of the tape or not. Well, that we can do in a finite state. We'll have a state that says we're on the right side or the left side. Whoa, how are we going to know if we switch over? Well, we better put a special symbol there to know when we cross over. So the first thing we need to do is, is shift everything over to the right one. Everybody believe you can do that? Shift everything over to the right one? You can do it. And then put a special dollar sign. So I'll put a special dollar sign on that spot. And now, any time we're on the right side of the tape, which we'll remember in the finite state, if we go to the right, it means going to the right two symbols in our one tape simulation. If we go to the left, it means going to the left two symbols in our simulation. That's fine. So our new machine is just has extra states between extra movements, which makes it go twice over before it actually looks at a symbol. It ignores all the symbols in between. If we ever cross this dollar sign, we move into another state, which simulates our machine by, if you go to the left here, we need to go to the right in our single tape simulation by two symbols. And if we go to the right here, we need to go to the left here two symbols at a time. So this is a perfectly fine way to do it. And it's not the only way, but it's a perfectly reasonable way. And the idea is that two sets of infinity is no more than one set, because you can just collapse them and interleave them, as long as you explain to the person what to do, which ones to ignore. This tells you that adding more tapes doesn't matter. It just means interleaving. It's going to tell us that in a second. Not quite obvious, but right, we're going to do that next. Good. Good. Neil said adding extra tapes doesn't help, and that's true. But that's not quite as obvious because there's more to keep track of with extra tapes than there is with just an extra half of a single tape. Let's think about this. This is not obvious. It, it, it gives you a general idea here. I did not prove this formally. But there's other ways to do it. The way that you often see this, uh, this proof done is that you increase the number of symbols in your language so that each symbol is a pair of all the old symbols and you keep pairs of symbols in each cell. And you also keep track of, in a finite state, whether you're on the right or the left. And if you're on the right, then you just look at the first symbol in your pair. And if you're on the left, you look at the second symbol in your pair. And it's very similar to Sham's idea, but you don't need the skipping over to get to the next cell. It's right there. You just look at the first half. But it, it's, it's more or less the same proof. That's a very good idea. Good idea, Sean. Yeah, Joe, you have a question? Could you just say, like, put a mark on the first one and move to the middle of the infinite station? and then simulate a two-way stack that way. And then if you get to the end, the dollar sign, you know you're at the end of the tape, just copy everything down, another infinity. What are you trying to simulate with what? I'm not sure I understand. You, just, you, you to, to simulate the two-way infinite with a one-way infinite? There's no halfway spot there. On, right. But you it, could do, but you could do like what a hard drive does. You could certainly move over as far as you want. Right. And then keep track of it that way, just keeping a mark. Oh, I see. And then when you get to the end, I see. It, here's, it's another good idea. Joe has a good idea. So he's saying, in order to simulate this kind of thing, just make a mark here so you never fall off the left end by mistake. Right. Shift everything over 
like two trillion places, and then start simulating the original machine exactly the way it is, going left and right. The only problem with that is at some point, the machine you're simulating might hit this dollar sign left, and it won't hit a blank. Then you just, then you just shift everything over and give yourself a little more room. It's perfectly fine. That's a good way to do it. It's another good way. Very good way. So then you need to write this little subroutine inside your routine that says, anytime I see the dollar sign going left, shift everything over to the right and continue. Sure. Good idea. Good idea. All right. Let's talk about some other variations. Lots of tapes. Lots of tapes, lots of heads. You can control each tape independently. Each tape has information you can write on it, and you can move right or left independently on each of the tapes. So it looks like this. Like a Hydra. Just like a Hydra. <laughs> what is a Hydra? <laughs> Do they have German accents? <laughs> a Tanisoft, that's the guy in Iowa. Howard Atanasoff. There was a big fight whether he was the one who first invented the electronic computer. Anyway. <laughs> Grant Wood, that's what I'm thinking. <laughs> All right, you only got one tape now, and you're trying to simulate this machine that's got a gazillion tapes. What are you going to do? Try to think high level, because if you get too much into the details, it can kind of bog you up and get you stuck. Yeah. So every cell is going to have. Like if you had, let's say you have three tapes. Yeah, three tapes. Put a marker at the beginning, like I said, for the two-way tape. Okay, okay, good idea. So that's yeah. good, good. So here's tape. I'll put a marker here on number one. And this will be all the stuff on tape one, and then a special marker at the end. And then I'll have all the stuff on tape two, and then a special marker at the end, and all the stuff on tape three, and a special marker at the end. There are my three tapes. I put them in a long line. This simulation actually is going to go a long way to explaining why a Turing machine can do a regular random access machine, because it's very similar. Think of each of these things as one cell in memory, and it's kind of what we're doing. But, but let's just stick to the tapes for a second. I put all the tapes here with special symbols around them. Now, I need to remember more than that about the tapes, right? What else do I have to remember about them? Where we are in each of the tapes, right? The head positions, the head positions in each of the tapes. And, uh, and what state I'm in. Right? Well, I guess we're only going to be in a single state, right? So we can just simulate that with our own finite state machine. That's easy. But we might be in three different places on the tapes. So where do you want to store that? You could surround each of those special markers on the other side with an indicator of, of where the head is on that tape. Yeah. We could also, that's so perfectly we fine. We could also actually like, like put a special dot right before where the head is. We could do that, because the way you do it, we'd actually have to do some calculation to move into where the head is to do some action. But if we actually leave the dot right before where the head is, we know where it is. Like if I actually kept a, an index as to where the thing is, I'd have to count and move there and get there. But if I just put a special dot in, say right here, right where the tape is, right where the head is, then my machine, whenever it sees that dot, it knows it can go ahead and process the next symbol. Yeah, it's a lot of work. So every single step of this machine gets simulated in this machine in the following way. This machine, one step, it moves things around in the tape. It moves things around in this tape. It moves things around in this tape. What does this machine have to do? Dum, 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 dum. Oh, here's a dot. I'll do what this machine does, and I'll make my change. Let me go all the way down to the next tape. Dum, 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 dum. Here's another dot. I'll go make that change. I'll go make that change. I'll go make all the right and left moves. I'll go all the way back to the beginning. Now I'm ready to do the next step of the original three-tape machine. So every move of this machine is a long scan and a processing of these three tapes. It's a lot of work, but we could do it. It's as though this machine 